Hey guys, this is Triptych. I have yet another Fleet Ops game for you today. This is turning out to be a very busy Saturday if I actually post all of these. This is another stock game, Fleet Ops version 3.27, and this map is Star Traffic, created by Boggs, who is awesome, although no longer active in our community. He's off working on his real job and his real life. I think he might have some real kids. Ugh, what a freak. So, back in the land of imaginary spaceships, this is a remake of an Alliance's game, so even though it was random the first time around, this time everybody knows who is what and where is who. So, Martok and Nessie on the top versus Mighty Master and Klingon on the bottom, and we have two Feds on the top versus a Federation and a Borg. So this is OptiBorg, obviously, for a stock. And everybody's scouting. And it will take me a moment to find out what everybody's avatars are. We see standard engineering builds from both of these top players. With a Antares Yard first, but not just Antares Yard. Antares Storage Dock. Um, I would expect engineering and Antares for a warp and rush. So with just the Antares, yeah, it's a science build. So. Uh, we can expect to see either, as a mason, we can expect to see either sabers or canaverals or norways. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm cheating. Actually, uh, Mighty Master just came into my channel right before I started this game and said he was going to build norways. So it's actually norways. But I can pretend that I just figured that out on my own. Actually, I probably would have figured it out by this point. Um, and this is because he saw that the other players, you know... He scouted them fairly this time around, but they are Federation, and Norways do well against those Intrepids, and pretty well against the Monsoons, too. Uh, the Norway Special deals damage. It does area damage, and I think it takes a little time to actually do it all, um, and it does extra damage to small ships. I should really find out what the exact mechanics are, but I think it's a little bit... Um, I think it deals damage that's spread out. That's right. So... In, in game mechanic terms, what it actually does is it places an invisible turret that fires like 200 shots, each of which does one damage. And so it does like something around, it's, it's like 120, maybe 200 damage, but it divides it under all the targets nearby. Which means uh, if you can get it on one or two ships, then you'll have really high spike damage, but it's actually not an area of effect ability because the more enemies that are there, the crappier it becomes. Like if there's six or seven enemies, they won't even notice it. And if there's ten or more, yeah, even when you drop all of your plasma coils at once, it doesn't really feel that significant. So on the top, uh, this is a mason for Nessie. Um, we're about to see what Martok took. Uh, this, is, this is a bit of a harder map for Risner, honestly. Let's see. Okay, this is a Risner, though. Um, I feel like all the advantages of Risner tended to be on bigger maps in stock. I've tried to work around this some, although I've kind of fed a little bit in that, you know, in Triptych's mod, I made it so that Mason had the cost discount on chassis levels, and then Risner just had more that she could do once she got them. I am considering reverting that because uh, it has been lately that people don't really play Mason, or. Er, don't really play Risner in Triptych's mod because Mason is so nice. Despite all the wonderful things I gave them. So, um, we're not seeing any ships though here. And immediate chassis level 2. So this is a Risner Akira Rush, which used to be one of my favorites because it gives you the discount on the chassis level in, in stock. However, I've found that actually it's... I prefer Mason Akira's to Risner's. Um, the Risner Akira has 25 offense, 28 defense. The Mason has 22 offense, 32 defense. So it has way more defense than offense, but that actually works out pretty well at scales. And here's an Arati Yard, so actually, never mind, it's not Akira's, it's Avalon's. Although he might have an Akira too. And you can see the amount of tech building he's having to get is just slaughtering his economy. He doesn't have... An expansion? Okay, he's getting a storage dock, but he doesn't—he can't saturate with fighters. Um, and he is very vulnerable. Although, yeah, I guess... Okay, he did get this storage dock, so that's where that went. But he basically threw everything he had into this economy. And 
with the Norway already out from Mighty Master, uh, he might be able to take this. He might be able to get in there and do an early snipe. So we have the storage dock. And the other thing specifically about plasma, con, you know, uh, plasma coil, that special that isn't even researched yet, is since it's divided among targets, that includes structures. So it also means anytime they're near a yard, the effectiveness is greatly reduced. I mean, if you were going to use it on one enemy ship, but they get near a yard, well, guess what? It's reduced by half because the yard doesn't care. This yard has over 1,500 shields. It really doesn't care about a plasma coil. And the plasma coil is still going to affect it. So, sorry, let me just cover these other guys real quick. Uh, Nessie is getting the science after in some intrepids, so I'm expecting warpins. Um, doesn't have too much economy at the moment. Well, okay, Nessie has spent the money on the infrastructure and is about to start getting the income. So it'll be a, a short delay. Um, I don't know if he'll want to pause production before getting that Starfleet command because it's very important. And the Borg down here that I have not been paying attention to, Zap, he's still on chassis level 1, and he's gotten an adapter out. A really fast adapter. This is a defensive-looking adapter. This is a a single EM regeneration. I wonder if that's like a cheaper variant, or that might be the highest defense you can get. Because the, I've mentioned it before, these adapters are all over the place. You can build an adapter with 39 offense but terrible defense. But this is a high defense one. This is 27 offense, 35 defense, 31 system value. And even though it's detecting cloak, there are going to be no cloaked on the enemy side. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's, gonna, he's trying to take out this platform with that torpedo damage, but he doesn't have that much damage. And even though his system value is okay, it's not going to save him from these intrepids. Especially considering... You know, there's a yard here that's about to have allied repair. So this guy needs to run. He really needs to run. Um, I think Starmaster's Norway attack has been uh, blunted a little bit. Uh, yeah, the, these guys really don't care about one Norway. When there's more Norways, it'll be scary. And I suspect he's yeah he's going to be double yarding Norways now. And they're really going to be a problem for these Intrepids. But nothing else besides the Intrepids is really in trouble right now. And you'll okay. And here's the first Avalon. The Avalon is 35, 37, 20. However, this offensive value does not take the fighters into account, which means the actual offensive value is much higher. So I mean, just the ship itself, just this little laser sucker, fires enough that it produces 35 offensive value. And I do like the the Avalon for its weapon systems. As a combat ship, I mean, okay, it runs similar to the Excelsior 2, where if you're in the fight, it's deadly. But if you're losing, it's kind of hard to retreat. Um, but it, I think it's going to work out pretty well here. You can see... Um, who is that? That's Borg. Zap's economy is really ready for something else because he did not get the early Scout Cube probe that would be normal for a Borg player. Um, he has saturated his expansion, but he, he doesn't seem like he has any plans to move up. So, I guess he's probably saving for a sphere at this point. He doesn't really want to mess with any more adapters. If this were Triptych's mod, um, maybe I would say a Dode Relay in the middle here, but as they're significantly weaker in stock, it's probably not worth it. Uh, one more thing I've done in Triptych's mod, by the way, is when you deploy a Dode Relay, it costs 25 supply, which is on top of it already costing some... 30, 40 supply to get the regular relay dode out because the relay module is extra expensive. So the actual supply cost of dropping a dode relay is like 70 or 80. It was ridiculous. So I reduced that final cost. I got rid of the final 25 supply cost of dropping a relay, uh, hoping that that will make them easier to use. Not overpowered, but more like uh, sort of like any in any given game, you know, any player of another race expects to build a repair yard at their expansion. And I sort of feel like in just about any given game, a Borg player should have the option to get a Dode Relay at his expansion, his primary expansion, if he so chooses. I feel like that's just a very important option for all of the races to be able to control their expansions. And I, you know, I added a whole bunch of features to the relays. Some of them can assimilate, some of them, one of them can use nanites. 
Um, all of them recrew nearby ships just like the incubation chambers, stuff like that. And let's see. Let us see. So these Intrepid's raiding here, they're not going to get a kill. Um, in Triptych's mod, the resource assimilators have 30 defense, but they also have the regeneration special. In stock, they have 45 for optimize, and they, they can't regenerate. So it's putting damage on one is a lot harder to get rid of, but their hit, their hit points is just so high. Um, he may get away with it, though. Although, the definition of get away with it is kind of flexible here, because, see, he's already running these away. Um, because these Norways, if these Norways catch these ships, they will kill the Excelsiors at least. Probably the Galaxy as well, because the Galaxy is slow. And he has researched Plasma Coil, so here we're going to get to see it in use. I'm expecting him to still use it right away, even though it will split its damage. Um, because then he could regenerate his energy. But maybe not, we'll see. Um, and maybe there's going to be another fight happening somewhere else that's more important that he has to go to. Um, we've passed the 50 supply that we would expect to see a sphere, so maybe it's something like a diamond rush. That would be very interesting to see. Um, diamonds against Avalons, man, you really, really don't want to let it fire on those fighters, because that will do nothing. But if you can shoot at the Avalon directly, the diamond will do just great. Okay, but it is a, it is a sphere. He's going for that. Okay, quick update. Everybody's saturated. Uh, Martok, well, actually, no. Martok's getting saturated. He really needs to get more miners out. Oh, okay, never mind. That's his third expansion. So he's doing okay. Martok has very high economy right now. He's getting his Avalons, and now that he's actually paid for that crazy high initial cost of the chassis levels and the yards, now he just sits back and builds Avalons and Ocuras all day long. He can get platforms. This is a very econ-heavy build, which is something the feds are great at. It's offset by the fact that these Avalons have a very high supply cost, but that's not going to be enough to stop him. In fact, he could still go for Warpins. Now, Starmaster Prodigy's uh, Norway count has to be getting pretty obscene here. Oh, okay. Turret to kill that scout. Okay, he does have seven. And I wonder if he's going to go for the, the third level special. Yeah, there we go. So the third level special, basically, I don't know if it stops it from being a support ship. Let me see. It cannot use special abilities. But the important things are the stat bon bonuses, which the offense defense is just great. It becomes just about immune to stations, which is great for knocking down star bases and turrets. As long as you fly this closest to the enemy ship, it will take the damage. And now the Warpins are back with a vengeance. Um, I imagine there's another Warpin about to happen in a minute here. So they have the Galaxies, Monsoons, and Trepids. Nessie has been doing a fairly standard fed build. Let's see if he has specials on these ships. Uh, he does have the Intrepid special, which uh, doesn't do anything against the Norways, but maybe it'll give you that last little bit you need to kill off a sphere, which, by the way, is a... 2 beam, 2 regen sphere, which um, in stock is, I don't like them at all because they do the split fire, which in a situation like this where there's so many enemy ships, enemy ships and you need to get kills, I find the split fire just doesn't work out for me. But maybe he'll be okay with it. And probably more important is the beam resistance. That can be very huge against these Avalons, which are very beam heavy. Um, the Akuras, uh, they're torpedo heavy, but they have beam weapons. In fact, just about everything the Fed own has a beam weapon. Whether they, whether it's their primary weapon or not, yeah. But they all at least have it. Oh, I really wanted to see that galaxy get killed. Ooh, he could plasma coil this. I don't know what specials he's used in this fight already. Oh, okay, but if ever one of these ships gets off by itself, he could plasma coil it. Okay, this, this guy has his Assault Special active. In fact, all of them do now. And they're probably going to continue to use that over and over again just to get that damage. But you see Nessie doing very good micro with his ships to make sure that he got that Norway kill. 
Um, now it's up to Starmaster Prodigy to chase again, but it's very tricky to figure out when you're going to lose a ship, when you can kill an enemy ship, and to balance that correctly. So, Zap, it's, it's almost time for Zap to have another sphere. Uh, there he goes, you see he, he's rebuilt. I think he lost two constructors, maybe it was only one though. He's about to deploy these again. Back over here, and actually he doesn't really have a good turret defense in this version, but Star Master Prodigy is going to come all the way over here and build him some platforms. That'll be helpful. Meanwhile, oh, <laughs> the torpedo platforms are coming up. You'll also notice uh, these platforms all belong to Nessie, not Martok. Nessie is uh, Mason feds, and so his turrets are stronger. So he's t he's taking over the turreting, and we're not like Martok isn't really worrying about it so much. And you know, this is this is such a hardened position now. This is a great place for these Avalons to go out, attack, and then retreat to. But there's fed platforms over here, so we might be building up to a pretty long standoff, I'm afraid. Unless you like to watch that kind of thing. Oh, and the sneaky, sneaky platform build is going to get killed, as is the constructor. So it was a nice thought, build a platform, help out your friend, but you you didn't scout it properly. If you're going to do this, you got to have a scout sitting over here. I don't even know if they've seen this Urati Yard. This is stock, so the Arati Yard has 161 defensive value versus 60 in Triptix mod. Um, it has about 3,500 hit points. It's really crazy hard to kill, especially before the enemy fleet gets there. So you see the top, and I was mentioning this in the last game I did too, there, we're seeing a lot more proxy yarding and turreting just today, really. Uh, but as of late... Um, not even going for a strategic position just because it's, or sorry, not going for resources, but because it's a strategic position. And this guy needs to go. He is not being controlled at all. Star Master just wasn't using him. And here we go. They, they've scouted this. They might even try to kill this monsoon, and they might have the damage to do it. You could plasma coil this. You really could plasma coil this. Or you could plasma coil that. Kill that sucker right there. Kill the Excelsior 2, dude. Oh, but there's a big push in the middle, and he's needed there. Uh, the Sphere is shooting at two targets, which, okay, may also help against the fighter craft, although I don't see it attacking too many fighter craft. Um, the top team is really just looking for what they can get a kill on, because they can't kill the Sphere. They might be able to kill off a turret, maybe an adapter. But I guess the most important thing they did there was draw, draw Star Master Prodigy ships back in when they could have done some damage over here. He really wanted to kill that Excelsior too, because that's just such a juicy target. 33, 34. And, you know, it's so easy to... The, the cost difference is just insane. You know, these ships are free. These are all warpins. This shot, this ship cost around 800 Diluthium. These ships cost around, like, 400, 450. So, every Excelsior 2 you can catch by itself and kill is totally worth it. So really, none of the other economies have been harassed much. Now we're seeing a complete monsoon spam coming out of Stormmaster Prodigy. He's really hoping to counter off um, these carriers. And I don't remember if the fighters count as long range or short range currently. Uh, there were some bugs in the original version where even though the fighter, even though the carriers were long range, the fighters were using a short range profile, which meant you know, anything with high-density shield generators like the Monsoon was not getting its defense bonus against the fighters. So I'm not certain, I'm not certain how that is right now, if they ever resolve that or not. But this high number of Monsoons, I'm not quite sure what he's hoping for. Um, except for just, just tanking Avalon fire for the other ships. And you'll notice the Monsoons will get shot at before any of these Norways. Okay, and they're trying to get the chase down here. You see, this this ship, this fleet by Nessie is very fast, so it can run away. They might get an Avalon kill if they just keep chasing. This is very much going to depend on how effectively they chase. This platform might upgrade, though, if they're not careful. And there, okay, there's the mass damage on it right after it started upgrading. That is great. That thing never got to get the advantage of the resources that were spent. 
But you see, we have two Mason torpedo platforms, and now Sovereign's coming out. So, um, yeah, it, that's the other thing about an Avalon start is it's not that big of a step up to get Sovereigns. I mean, as Risner, it's I think it may be like 900 dilithium, so it isn't it isn't nothing at all. But once once you've already got the Arati Yard and chassis level two and everything else, it's very easy to get to those high tech ships. And you see here, Starmaster Prodigy not losing anything at all, um, not using his specials like plasma coil and his other ability. So I'm I'm a bit confused by that. These ships, they really need to chase more effectively. They need to not even give attack orders, just move orders all the way back here. You'll see these Federation ships will come in to try to counter this, and they have all these turrets to try to deal with this crap. You'll see the damage on the Sovereign is just incredible, but now the fighters come, and the fighters are going to soak up phaser damage for some time. These constructors are dying faster than they can cancel the platforms, let alone get into the yard. Um, another Norway getting out of position. They did a chase on these ships, but I don't know if they got any kills at all. They just did a lot of damage. Okay, maybe one or two monsoons. Now, though, as the fighter craft start to lose out... Um, oh, very badly done. Engine disabled. It engine disabled the platforms. But as the fighter craft, there's so many of them tanking these turrets, but now that they're finally dead, the turrets will finally start to shoot at other stuff. And we're going to see some Akira's die. I don't know if we're going to see any Avalon's die. This is entirely up to the spheres. And as I mentioned, these spheres, their damage output is only 33 damage each shot. Whereas if this was a non, if this was a, a regular sphere without the beam module, that would be around 70. So there, are, the the beam sphere's ability to kill a single target is really crappy in stock and like I say that's why I went for the split fire is because yes they do do extra damage overall but in a game like this where you're specifically you have to get kills before the enemy runs away the split beams are just terrible they're they're horrible and I wonder if we're gonna see another sphere here we saw a recycling center into uh, incubation chambers so Zap is really trying to get his later game economy going but without his expansion, it's just not as good. Like, one working expansion is better than a recycling center with your incubation chambers. And the recycling center is way more expensive. So I can't really see what the value is. Now, these spheres are doing an okay job of tanking. These guys are totally okay with the spheres being shot at, I think, as long as the Norways are still alive. Um, he's in a bit of danger right now. He might lose a sphere, but... Um, I think I think Star Master Prodigy is happy with the way things are going. We still don't see plasma coils though. We do see the assault systems, and this sphere I think is going to escape. Many many ships from Nessie are going down. Um, but even now he's firing on the monsoons instead of the intrepids, and the intrepids are the ones that these guys counter. And they're not using their plasma coils, and their assault systems are on cooldown. This beam sphere. Both of these beam spheres are firing constantly, but their damage output is not very high on, on getting kills. And finally, the Federation have just cleaned this up. Those fighter craft tanked all of the laser shots, laser shots and now they're going to come in, and I'm going to call this the top team's victory right here. Um, there's, there's no longer anything that this fleet can do. And so this sphere is going to be chased down and killed just as soon as they're done cleaning up Star Master Prodigy's Norways. So a very interesting battle. We saw that super late game tech up from Martok, and now his his sovereigns are just going to keep coming. And there's damage on the engines of that sphere, so it's stuck in the water. Um, you'll see Star Master Prodigy, he had a lot of Norways. He really did. But he wasn't using the plasma coil, and he wasn't always using the assault subsystems, although I guess it has a cooldown when he sometimes he could not. But he really... He had a lot, and he lost a lot, that's for sure. Uh, here's an Avalon out of position. They could maybe get a kill on that if these guys swept around Plasma Coil at once, and then it's dead. And I really do want to see what happens with the Sphere. I think it's going to die. It's been shooting this whole time. Like I say, it, it had no chance of getting a kill. It really didn't. 33 damage to two ships. You're never going to get a kill. So let's see if they get a kill on this Avalon. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. 
Don't forget to repair. He's lost in Norway. He can kill this Akira. Oh, these guys have a blade of armor, though. I totally forgot about that. You, do, you really don't run into this very often. But these Sovereigns will take half damage from the Norways. So there's really nothing these Norways can do against a Sovereign. They're quite ineffective. And where's the sphere? Okay, now there's another sphere. This is a single beam, one prime, two regen. Still a... You know, I'm, I'm trying not to be mean or let my opinions take over too much, but I consider that a terrible, terrible sphere in this setup. Because even with the prime, you know, your, your damage is 35 each shot. And it doesn't matter if it hits two targets because there's so many targets out there, it really doesn't matter. Like this Sovereign, he doesn't care if it's missing 50 hit points. It's not going to get killed. So now we do see plenty of monsoons from Starmaster Project, and I think he's finally going to retreat. He did kill an Avalon, so he is managing to still get a couple kills. Oh wow, look at all these fighters he can kill for experience. But yeah, so many ships left behind. So many ships on the top. And this recycling center is going to die. And at this point, I'm going to stop my commentary and just watch the rest of this battle without words. So this is Triptych signing off.